Welcome to Lit Crit as Fuck, the audio experience in which I say shit about stuff and you listen to junk. Previously on Lit Crit as Fuck. We were sloppily introduced to a bunch of characters through my brain. And Malkovich Doors. Do you want me to stop saying that? We learned that Fyodor Pavlovich Karamazov, the father of all of the brothers Karamazov, is a terrible human being. He's just, he sucks. We learned that he has four children, three of them in marriages, one of them not. His eldest son, Dmitry Karamazov, who is looking for some money. The middle kid, Ivan Karamazov, who really at this point, it's unclear what he wants. And the baby, Alyo. Karamazov, who is an extremely holy dude and trying to become a monk. And of course, there is the bastard son who's about the same age as Ivan, Smirjikov, who's a psychopath. These kids don't really know each other and they're just coming back to town now. Because reasons! We learned that there is a monastery and that's where we're gonna be. This entire episode takes place at the monastery. Title card The Brothers Karamazov by Fyodor Dostoevsky, part two. This is why we can't have nice things. Dmitri is trying to get money from Fyodor Pavlovich because Fyodor Pavlovich got his money from Dmitri's mother. And also because Dmitri spent all of his money because he's really bad with money. And he owes people money and is in debt and wants money, 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 money. Also, Dmitri is betrothed to a woman named Katya, but he's looking for a way out of that. There'll be more about this later. I just want to introduce that now so that you got it. You got it in the brain stems. Fyodor Pavlovich is like super greedy. He's like so, 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 so greedy and also likes money. which is because he's greedy. That's not going good. They're not They're not seeing eye to eye about anything at all. In fact, Fyodor Pavlovich attempts to get this woman named Grushinka to help him put Dmitri in prison because he does not like them and they don't like each other. And also there's an officer who takes part in this and that's kind of important because Dmitri beats him up. Ivan comes up with the idea of going to the monastery to speak with the elder, Father Zosima, who is supposed to be very wise and maybe he can help in this whole mess. Why Ivan thought that this was the place to do it is as mysterious as everything else that Ivan does. So they go to the monastery where all the monkeys live and where Alyosha is practicing his monkness. It's kind of the first time we meet the people and we see them interact with each other for the very first time. So fun scene. I mean, what could go wrong. It's Fyodor Pavlovich and Ivan and Pyotr Alexandrovich Musov, the cousin of Dmitri's mother, who if you remember is the one who got partial custody of Dmitri when he was a baby and ended up taking him away from Fyodor Pavlovich. He will be referred to as simply Musov. Musov is really pretentious. Fyodor Dostoevsky likes to write the older liberals of the time as these dandies who are very self-important and mostly harmless, but kind of annoying. And Musov's young cousin, Kalganov, is also there for some reason. They're supposed to be meeting Dmitri there and Alyosha is already there because he lives there. So when they get to the monastery, they don't really know where anything is and nobody comes and greets them. And they're kind of like all like, what the hell? We are important nobles of the nobility. And why isn't anyone greeting us to show us the way to where we're supposed to go. Don't they know who we are? We want to talk to their manager. And then out pops literally out of nowhere. This guy just, he comes from nothing. He just poop. He poofs. I have this whole entire theory that that this character is actually like some kind of either an adorable little demon or an elf or something. Anyways, his name is Maximov. He's a 60 year old man and he has this awesome lisp that makes him sound like a child. And he's a cute little addition. So he pops out of nowhere and he's like, hey, you guys looking for the elder? I I know where that is. And then they're like, yeah, we need to go to the place. And then he shows them how to get there. And then that's pretty much all you get from him at the time being but he's in more of the story later and i really like him because he's fun once they've gotten to the elder's cell they start fighting because musov and fyodor pavlovich hate each other and so like a large portion of this just the two of them hating on each other hard father zosima excuses himself in order to go speak with some women who have made a pilgrimage to see him alyosha joins him most of them are peasant women but one of them is a character named madame hoklakova also with her daughter lisa lisa is a little bit of a troublemaker She and Alyosha have known each other for a long time. They are friends and she likes to laugh at him a lot. Madame Oklakova is a little bit of a flighty woman who likes to kind of insert herself into other people's business. Madame Oklakova 
hands Alyosha a letter. And the letter is from Katerina Ivanovna, Katya, Dmitri's betrothed. And the letter is asking Alyosha to come and see her. Then they go back to the meeting. And then you get an article that Ivan wrote about the ecclesiastical courts. Because come on, that's what you're, that's what you're here for. This isn't Michael Bay. This is Dostoevsky. MFs. So yeah, you go to Zosima's and you get some intellectual debate about philosophy and religion. It's a fucking thrill ride. Why not? I am not paranoid about whether people like the books that I like. Shit, I don't. You just shut up. Shut your mouth. You shut your mouth. In said article, Yvonne makes the argument that there should be no separation of church and state because what? But Yvonne's smart and also doesn't really believe in God and stuff, right? Well, sort of. To paraphrase the iconic Sir Martin Lawrence, shit is about to get real. In the article, Yvonne is claiming that the church would be better at dissuading criminals from breaking laws because criminals wouldn't be able to be like, hey, yeah, sure, I'm, I stole a thing, but I still love Jesus because if you steal a thing and the church is the state, then by breaking any laws, you have broken a law of Jesus or something and so then you get excommunicated as well as like your head chopped off and then the criminals will be like oh no I can't ever do a crime anymore because I won't go to heaven after they chop off my head there is this whole entire thing with Yvonne where you need to have the notion of an afterlife in order to have morality morality is not something that's natural in us it's something that we have to like force on ourselves via God and and punishment and you know if you're bad you go to hell if you're good you go to heaven that stuff so like if we didn't have those ideas which we necessarily created in order to keep ourselves in line because we're the worst we wouldn't be kept in line and so everybody would just be murdering everybody all the time and stuff the monks are like kind of on board with this whole thing but it's not entirely in good faith you know Yvonne's article and Father Zosima realizes that and he's all like it would be bad to excommunicate people for stealing the loaf of bread because it's like, what? That's not Christian. That's mean. And you're going to go to hell because you did a crime and don't you get to repent or what? What's going on here? This is, he thinks that the criminals need to be loved. So anyways, they're in the middle of this discussion. Musaf is, he's just clutching his pearls about it all. And Musaf is kind of a, you know, liberal. He likes France. Actually going on a little bit of a rant. And suddenly he doesn't get to finish that rant because the door opens and oh my God, Dimitri finally showed up. Did I mention Dimitri wasn't there? So this whole time, they've actually been waiting for Dimitri to show up, but they've kind of forgotten about him. And right when you do really kind of forget about Dimitri, he busts in the door. He seems to bust in doors a lot. The Kool-Aid man of the brothers Karamatsa. Dimitri's really late and he's kind of the entire reason they're there. When he comes in all angry faced, he says that Smirnikov had told him the meeting was at 1, not 11.30. Immediately he accuses Fyodor Pavlovich of being the cause of this miscommunication. Of course, he's going to immediately think that because Smirnikov is a servant of Fyodor Pavlovich's and who would have done this? Except, of course, it was probably Smirnikov. I just feel pretty certain that it was Smirnikov the whole time. It would behoove Smirnikov to make sure that this meeting doesn't go well because he needs them to hate each other as much as possible so that he can do what he's going to do in his little plot plan scheme -y thing later in the book. Spoilers. So everything goes really bad. Fyodor Pavlovich immediately starts in on, on Dimitri and is talking about how much he hates him and Zosima's like, eh, uh, could you not do that? That's rude. And then Dimitri is like, why is such a man alive? Tell me, can he be allowed to go on defiling the earth? Listen, listen, monks, to the parricide cried Fyodor Pavlovich. And they're like, yeah, that does sound a little bit like he's threatening to kill you, I'm not gonna lie. And Zosima is like, I gotta do something about this. And so he gets up and he bows down to Dmitri, very, very, very low to the floor. And everyone just kind of stops and is like, that was weird. Immediately after the meeting ends, Father Zosima goes to his cell because he's very tired and also he's dying. So he doesn't really have a lot of energy. Alyosha helps him there and they have a little talk. Father Zosima tells Alyosha that he has to 
leave the monastery. And he's going to have to go out into the world and have adventures and take the ring and throw it into Mount Doom. And by the way, they haven't even gone to supper yet. This was a long period of waiting for Dmitri to show up and then the immediate clash of Dmitri and Fyodor Pavlovich as soon as he gets there. So then Musov is like, Fyodor Pavlovich, you're the worst, so I'm just going to go and screw you. And Fyodor Pavlovich is like, you guys go have your dinner. I'm going to go home because I was a jerk. Okay, the Father Superior is actually not having just a dinner. Apparently he's having a banquet. For these schlubs, Musov and Yvonne get to the Father Superior's. Musov makes this whole big apology for Fyodor Pavlovich and he starts to feel better about things because the guy's gone and this could be all right. And they say a prayer before they're about to eat and then suddenly Fyodor Pavlovich is behind them and he's like, hey, remember when I said I was going to leave? Just kidding. And Musov just starts to have almost like a nervous breakdown. Fyodor Pavlovich had actually meant to leave. He was about to leave when something struck him and he realized he wasn't done being terrible. He had more being terrible to do. This is why we can't have nice things. After taunting Musov a little bit more, he turns to the Father Superior and he starts to say things that he knows will be offensive about the monastery in particular. He starts to bring up the fact that the elders are a bit of a controversy in Russia. He starts to claim that the monastery had some horrible effect on him as a child. Apparently it's a complete lie. It almost makes it sound like he was abused by somebody at the monastery as a child, but um, we're assured by the narrator that he's just making it up. The Father Superior keeps his cool and just keeps on kind of quoting the Bible at him and, you know, being like, hey, it's fine. You, you can abuse me because I'm a good Christian and I'll take it and turn the cheek. And every time he does that, Fyodor Pavlovich kind of mocks him for being religious. Oy, oy, oy. And it just gets more and more outrageous and ridiculous where he's just clearly standing there hollering, insulting stuff at holy men. And there's not even really a good reason why other than that's just kind of who he is. The quirkiness of Fyodor Pavlovich. So all the while that the badness is happening, Maximov is actually there, my cute little lispy demon friend. And while Fyodor Pavlovich is going on his weird tirade, he asks Maximov to come home with him. Like he wants to adopt him or something. At some point, finally, some of the monks do start to take offense. It comes to a sort of fever pitch and Musov and, oh yeah, Kalganov is still there. Musov's younger cousin. Yeah, he still exists. Musov storms out. Kalganov follows him because this is just too much. This is crazy. This is crazy. And Fyodor Pavlovich promises him that wherever Musov goes, he's going to follow him. He's just enjoying trolling him. As it starts to break up and Musov leaves, Fyodor Pavlovich storms out. By the by, there is a douchebag named Rakitin who has been at the meeting the whole time as well, but he doesn't really talk. We'll talk about him more later. The important thing right now is that he exists. While these people are literally just failing at supper, after his little talk with Zosima, Alyosha has been talking to Rakitin, the douchebag, and so he hasn't actually gotten there yet. Alyosha then sees people in the distance yelling at each other, looking very confused and upset. He sees his father is certainly in the middle of it all. You're seeing the aftermath of what happens when Fyodor Pavlovich gets invited to eat meals with monks. And he hollers to everybody that his son Alyosha is going to come home and he is no longer going to be allowed to stay at this monastery as if he has the right to do any of that. Fyodor Pavlovich and Ivan go to their carriage. All of a sudden, running toward them is hilariously this adorable little guy. Maximov is like, take me with you! Take me with you! Fyodor Pavlovich is pretty psyched about this. He actually is like, yeah, yeah, come on, let's get in the thing. You can lay down on our feet because he can't really fit. And then Ivan just punches him in the chest and Maximov goes flying. Damn, that's a cold ass honky. And then you start to wonder, does this guy have cat funerals too? Do you like how I just uh, made that reference to the other? episode where I talked about Smirnikov and his weird cat murdering as a kid. You like that? Callbacks! Fyodor Pavlovich is like, what was that? What What are you doing? That wasn't nice. And Ivan just turns to him and he's like, you shut your mouth. And Fyodor Pavlovich is like, whoa, okay. Um, and he starts to act like he actually cares what someone thinks of him. But it's 
not clear whether it's because he actually cares about his son or because he is legitimately afraid of Yvonne. One time when he's drunk, he says, I'm not afraid of Dimitri. I'm afraid of Yvonne. He just threw a 60 year old man off a carriage by punching him in the chest because he is done. He is so done with this shit. And can we just point out real quick, like that this whole entire thing was Yvonne's idea. Remember that? He was like, hey, I have a great idea. Let's go to the monastery and talk to a bunch of holy folks and bring Fyodor Pavlovich there. Why does Yvonne do anything? He's an enigma wrapped in a taco, wrapped in a blanket, wrapped in a teapot. What's something else that gets wrapped? And so the meeting's over and they all leave. This is the end. On the next episode, we will learn that Dimitri is the Slender Man as well as the Kool-Aid Man. And we will learn a little lesson about a talking donkey. See you next time. Thank you.